Hey friends, uh, welcome to another video of training. Today we'll be focusing on how airflow can affect the pressures in your system. Now there's so many things that come into play when we're talking about pressures because you can have bad duct design, you can have the system undercharge or overcharge, uh, but let's just pretend for today that the system has the correct amount of charge. At least I hope so. I don't know what they what they were doing last with this unit. Um, let's just say we have good airflow. But what I really want you to see from today's video is how airflow can affect your low side and your high side pressures, whether you, if you're in cooling or in heating, because this package unit is a heat pump. So this package unit that we're working on is a 410A refrigerant uh, heat pump. So right now I currently have the system in cooling. So right now I make, you know, first I have to make sure I have it on the right refrigerant, but I have a suction pressure of 108 and then I have an evaporator temperature of 35 degrees. So I basically, the gauges basically convert the pressure to a temperature for me. So 108 on the low side and I have a 35 degree evaporator temperature. And on the high side, I have a 290 uh, PSI on, on the high side, and I have a condenser temperature once we convert it to a temperature, a condenser temperature of 93.5 degrees. Now, what would happen if you have a dirty filter or if, so, if people decide to close the registers, the vents, or you have an undersized, a really undersized uh, return? Well, I want you to have in mind this number 108 right 35 but you just if you want you can just remember this number 108 psi let's go ahead and intentionally cause low airflow by putting a dirty filter and in this case i'm just putting up plywood we said it was 108 so look at that pressure drop a lot of people think that pressure is going to climb up climb up climb up because and then it's going to just blow up and that that's at least how i thought but my suction pressure actually drops because I'm not absorbing any heat through there. I have a dirty filter and my head pressure also drops because if I can't absorb heat, then I can't reject heat. But this one did drop just by a few, but my suction pressure dropped drastically. So yes, if you have a dirty filter, close vents, right? Dirty filter, dirty evaporator coil. Um, registers that people close and undersized return that could cause your um, your suction pressure to go down by a lot now like I said in today's video we're gonna focus more on on the pressures we're not really gonna be focusing on superheat and subcool I'm gonna work on another video that goes over superheat and subcool uh, I'm just waiting for the temperatures to uh, climb up a little bit more but just uh, what I want you to see in, in today's video is how airflow affects your pressures. So we just went over how a dirty filter or low indoor airflow, right? So if you have a split system, uh, if the evaporator coil inside your house is getting very little airflow, your suction pressure drops. If you have a package unit, well, you have the ductwork going inside your house. So if you have a dirty filter, your suction pressure drops. But what happens when you have a dirty condenser because this one is outside right it's absorbing the air outside the house so what happens to the pressures when you have a dirty condenser well let's find out i'm gonna go ahead and get my plywood and then 104 295 look at my head pressure it's climbing up a lot faster pretty fast so my high my high side pressure is going up and because my I'm not rejecting a lot of heat right because we have it on cooling and my outdoor coil is the condenser eventually I'm going to have some high pressure high temperature vapor going to the indoor coil and you see my suction pressure climbing up my evaporator temperature is climbing up I won't have that much cooling I, it's not really going to be energy efficient but look at how much it's climbed up when you have a dirty condenser the capacitor for the outdoor fan motor, your condenser fan motor is not working. Your high side pressure climbs up faster, drastically. And then your suction pressure also climbs up because you're not, you're not rejecting all that heat. Okay, so I did remove the obstruction we had, right, from up here. You can see my high side pressure uh, going down, right? It's going down. 
and hence my suction pressure is also going down. You see, I'm not rejecting a lot of heat. There's a lot of heat present in, in, in the system because I'm not rejecting it. So that happens when um, these coils don't get cleaned, they get damaged, a bad cap, a bad condenser fan motor, or if you just did what I did, just cover the top, uh, that, will climb, that will climb up drastically. But what about heating? We did say this is a heat pump. So let's go ahead and turn on the system and get it to heat. So this system will default to heating, right? Because right now I'm sending 24 volts to my uh, reversing valve. So let's go ahead and uh, not send 24 volts so it can default to heating. You could probably hear that, that noise, the refrigerant now flowing the other way. So in a heat pump, right? In a heat pump, my indoor coil now, my indoor coil is my condenser and my outdoor coil is my evaporator. In cooling, in cooling, my outdoor coil was the condenser and then my indoor coil uh, was the evaporator. But in heating, because this is a heat pump, right? My indoor coil is the condenser, indoor coil is the condenser, and my outdoor coil is the evaporator, okay? So we'll go ahead and let it, let it run for a bit and we can see uh, the system running, right? So whenever, uh, you know, you're going to switch modes, you always want to wait a couple of minutes so that the system can kind of do its thing, right? It's uh, pumping refrigerant, sending high pressure, high temperature vapor inside your, inside of the, the indoor coil, right? Um, but what I really want to focus now is airflow once again. So uh, this is what confuses a lot of people here. If you remember when I had it in cooling, by me covering the return, my suction pressure dropped, right? But have in mind, now I am in heating. My indoor coil is my condenser. So look at what happens to my pressures when I have a dirty filter in heating mode. Okay, so let's keep an eye on these. About 120 and 3, eh, 325. It'll, it'll be 325 by the time we come back. 120, 325. Let's go ahead and cover this. Look at look at my high side pressure. It is climbing up. And you're like, wait, you, you just this was going up and cooling because you had it over here, but now it's when you're covering the, the indoor airflow, the high side pressure is going up. Yes, because my condenser is inside. It's in the inside, it's the indoor coil. So if you have a dirty filter, look at what happens. To my high side pressure because you're not rejecting any heat you don't have any cold air to cool down that um, hot coil to then supply the house with hot air i'm blocking it so look at my high side pressure climbs up almost 100 psi over my suction pressure also climbed up very little but look at look at my high side pressure you always want to make sure you always want to make sure that when you have it in heating you not only do you have good ductwork design, you want to make sure you have a, enough airflow going inside, but you want to clean your filters. If you have a dirty filter, if you're in heating on a heat pump, your high side pressure is going to shoot up because you're not rejecting heat. And have in mind, in cooling, your condenser coil is a lot bigger. In heating, your, your condenser which is inside is a lot smaller. You got to give it some love. You got to make sure it has airflow. So um, yes, with the dirty filter, you will have the, um, the high side pressure climb up and then this will climb up, not as much, but this one will climb up a lot as you can see. And it's starting to drop, drop down uh, little by little. But what I want you to see now is uh, this right here, the suction pressure. So let's say you have a dirty condenser and it's in heating. We just said the outdoor coil is my evaporator, right? Same thing. My suction pressure is going to climb, is going to go down because I can't absorb any heat. I can't absorb any heat. My, my evaporator temperature is 33 degrees. And then my ambient air here is probably around 65. So the 65 is a little warmer than the evaporator temperature. But if I can't absorb any heat, it's just going to start dropping and dropping and dropping, as you can see there. And the same thing, if I can't absorb heat, I can't really reject heat inside. So you see my high side pressure also 
goes down. So what happens here affects the high side pressure. What happens here affects the low side pressure. Have that in mind. Um, both of them work off of each other. It's all about heat transfer. But you see, I still have the, the plywood covered, covering the, uh, the, uh, the evaporator, and it's still dropping. So I'm going to go ahead and now remove it. Okay. Going to go ahead and remove it. And you see my suction pressure is climbing up. My high side pressure is climbing up as well. So the point of today's video is to get you to understand and remember your ABCs. Yes, we're back to kindergarten, right? When we have to remember our, our ABCs. But in HVAC, ABCs, you want to think about it this way. Airflow before charge. ABCs, airflow before charge. Before you even charge the system up, you always want to check your airflow.